Hello, John Talley here with Partzilla.com. Let me guess, you're getting ready to go riding, turn on your ignition, hit your switch, and nothing's happening. So now what do you do? Well, in this video, I'm gonna walk you through a few different scenarios that may help you diagnose what's going on with your machine. Now you will need at least to have a test light to do this. And if we're gonna get into the more advanced diagnostics, you may wanna go ahead and invest in a multimeter. Now don't be afraid, this is just gonna be a skill level one. So let's take that seat off and figure out why this ATV won't start. For those unfamiliar with the Honda TRXs, they're really easy to get to, well, your critical parts of the machine without any tools. The seat, you just simply reach behind and there's going to be a little tab or actually an arm that you lift up, release it, and then it pulls away. Now to really get access to where all the electronics are, we want to drop the rear tail section and now lift up on the front edge of this cover. It's just held in by a couple of grommets. And slide it forward, and then it releases. So under that cover is where the majority of the electronics are tucked away. I mean, you've got your battery here, of course, then your ECUs down at the bottom, and there should be a starter relay hidden somewhere up, right over here. And then you've got your fuses over here. So what I'm gonna do is bring over the test light and we're gonna see if we actually have voltage on the battery. And if you have a voltage meter, well, let's start with the simple stuff first. Let's make sure that we've got an adequate voltage enough to start this machine. Now I can go ahead and tell you, I know that this machine has voltage because when you flip on the switch, I can actually hear it go through the startup procedure, figuring out what the throttle plates are, my display is up. So there is voltage present and my test light verifies that. But how much voltage do we have there? That's where you're gonna need one of these. Let's see what our static voltage is. 12.26. Now this battery could stand a charge. I'd rather see it around 12.5, 12.6. But even that should be enough to at least engage the starting circuit, and that's not happening. Next, we wanna start checking our fuses. Now it's pretty much self-evident that the main fuse is okay because if the 30 amp was blown, none of this would light up. But we can still go check it, but I guarantee you it's still good. Now when you're checking a fuse, you're gonna have one side that's gonna be on the constant side and the other side is gonna be on the load side. We can pull that out on this particular one and you can see that this is the load and this is the battery side but that fuse is good. Now the other one that we wanna check is the ignition fuse and it is right here, a 10 amp. Good to go as well. Now the next component in this particular circuit is gonna be your stop switch and what you basically have is the run position in the middle and then a stop and then a stop whether you go right or left. Now the wiring where you could actually test this is hidden up inside here, but I can tell you on this particular model, that one switch not only does the starting circuit, it also does the ignition circuit. So when we've got this thing flipped on, and you can hear the fuel pump starting to prime, that should also activate and deactivate if I move that switch. So let's see if I'm right. That's off and back on. So that tells me that this switch is good to go. Now that leaves us with the start switch itself. I mean, that's the one that's supposed to activate the start motor. Now it does have a direct connection that comes back to the starter solenoid, which is buried down in there. We're gonna do a quick test on it up at its connector right here. Now if that still tests good, and we're actually gonna get voltage across the two poles that go to the starter, well, that'll tell us that it'll end up being the starter. But let's look at the relay first to see if it's got an issue. What I'm gonna do is release it from its holder so I can bring it out and actually access the wires. Now, what you don't want to do is use either your test light or your meter probe by cramming it down inside here. Because if you do that, it's gonna stretch out and or damage the the insulation and the conductor itself. 
And if you spread all that open, well, it's not going to do what it was designed to do, and that's to seal it up and to keep water out. So there's a couple of different ways we can take a look at this. We can go ahead and unplug it. And what we're going to be looking for is a trigger on that yellow with a red stripe wire. So we've got our unit switched on. We're going to ground our test light. And we're going to go on the inside of the plug. And you'll see the two connectors down inside. So we're going to go to that yellow one and see if it's sending voltage. And it is. So that tells me that that switch is good. The actual start switch is good. Now there's one more thing we want to check is the other side should be a ground. Now to test to see if this is actually a negative, what we'll do is take our test light and go to the positive side of the battery and it should light it up. There it is. So that's telling me that that is a ground because we're getting voltage from this side. All of that is verified that we have a good battery, all the circuitry is doing what it's supposed to do, and it is sending voltage and has a ground back at this connection, which goes to the starter relay. So the starter relay is what we need to look at next. Now what a starting relay actually does is basically an on-off switch, but it's transferring more power through a set of terminals. It'll have a negative and a positive trigger wire that we've just tested. Then it'll have a terminal going to the battery, and then the other one is actually going down to your starter. What it's basically doing is pulling up a contactor on the inside that's connecting those two poles together and sending voltage down to the starter. So we wanna verify that we have battery voltage on one side of our relay, and we do. So now, let's reconnect the trigger and take a look at the side that's going down to the starter. And when I push this, it should light up this light. Well, there it is. Now what should be happening is the contactor should be coming up and it should be sending the voltage from one pole to the other, which is heading down to the starter. So the problem is, I think we've got a bad starter solenoid. Plus, even if we didn't have battery voltage coming up to that pole, if it was energizing properly, you'd hear it click. Now, actually, I've got a new one over there we're going to plug in, and then you'll hear that click that I'm talking about. All right. Now it should click. There it is. So I'm betting that we have already proven that when I replace this, it's going to start. Well, let's install it and see if I'm right. Now this isn't too tough to do. Basically we just have the trigger which we've already disconnected and then you've got two rubber boots we need to pull out of the way and below that there are two 10 millimeter nuts that are holding both the battery and the starter wires in place. Now before we disconnect that all the way we need to go ahead and disconnect either the positive or the negative of the battery itself because those wires are live and I'd rather not short it out and uh, put on a spark show. Let's see if we can reach in here and grab this without dropping it. I feel like I'm playing operation. <laughs> Everything looks all right, but something's definitely going wrong on the inside. Ah, look right here. Looks like something has been uh, chewing on it. So I'm betting our, our issue is behind door number one. So now, slide in our new unit. All right, let's get these tightened back up. Reconnect. And slide back on its little holder. There. Get our boots back in place, cover up those two poles. A 
last but not least, let's reconnect our battery. Okay, moment of truth. Well, there you have it, guys and girls. Not that tough to figure out. Well, listen, if you need these parts or anything else for your machine, why don't you come see us at partzilla.com and we can get you taken care of. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the section below and I'll do my best to answer them. We just want to say thank you for shopping here with us at Partzilla. And hey, you like what you see? Why don't you go ahead and hit that subscribe button? That way you can keep up with whatever I'm working on next. Once again, we just want to say thank you and we will see you in the next video. Y'all have a great day.